Well, love from love, hope from hope, peace from our Prince of Peace. Welcome to these chronicles of the war in heaven that has concluded. And I, I know that this will bless you abundantly. For the dragon of old has been defeated. He's been cast down. Michael hogtied that guy because he can never again be the accuser of the brethren because God's everlasting covenant given through his everlasting gospel of whom I am the writer. It says point blank that uh, God says, I will forgive your iniquity and never remember it to us, which means Satan can never again accuse anyone because God refuses to remember any of our sin as it is written. And this is the gospel truth that uh, the word of God was changed and added to. And it brought forth, instead of blessing, nothing but a curse to the world because the world, word of God was added to. And the very people that the blessing was for, all of mankind, it was diverted and averted unto Christians alone. And then they waged war against the world and created a world of desolate heritages, Isaiah 49, 8. But beloved, all this was foreseen and the gross darkness of Isaiah 60, the Lord God brought himself and it began at Babylon and a veil has been all over all history, but he has now removed the veil. So no more shall we see through a glass darkly now we may finally shine as the stars that we were created so fearfully and wonderfully to be. So, beloved, welcome to this uh, war in heaven. It is going to be a doozy. And know this, beloved, that because it is our Lord of love who won the war in heaven, he alone is the God of men and women today. And know this, beloved, the war in heaven was fought not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love. And the sword of the spirit has now been beaten into the sickle of love of Amos 9. The harvest is on. And beloved, know that the war in heaven shall now make peace on earth since as it is in heaven peaceful, so shall it be upon earth. And let the wise who want to shine as the stars we were created to be understand well that all that is good in heaven and on earth is born of love. This war is not just. This war is not good if we're warring amongst ourselves. When all all uh, object of reason why our wars began has now been removed. Know that love alone is the only thing worth fighting for, beloved. And know, beloved, in this hour as we unfurl our own wings so that we may ascend to the great white cloud of Matthew 24 and Revelation 14, where the Lord stands sinking his everlasting gospel, which is these videos, into the earth. And this is what the Lord says, beloved. He says, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by the mighty army ahead, for the battle is not yours, but it is mine. And he has won the war already. And know, beloved, that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Such force demands an equal response, and Jesus is now making war on everything that hinders love, with his eyes blazing the fire of his greatest benevolence that he's pouring forth as a flood in these days greater than Noah's. And know, beloved, that love is war. The Lord needs a good soldier 
He needs someone who will go to hell and back with him. Someone who won't fold under pressure. Someone who won't quit when it gets a little tough. That's when he'll know that he's found something special. So ask yourself, are you that special? Are you that someone who is special? Because he's looking for something real, something worth keeping. Anybody can love anybody when things are good. The real love stands the test of time, the test of faith, and the test of loyalty. Unconditional love is what we all need. And it is time for our love to arise and shine and pass the test of time. And know that there are people who will take their very last breath trying to stop two people from being in love. And it is time for love to go before us all. For the Lord needs people that are ready to lace up their boots and fight for him, fight for his love, his kingdom age love, because anything worth having is worth fighting for, beloved. So, love from love. Hope from hope, peace from peace. It's a good story time about love. And praise the Lord that it's so. Because, beloved, the truth is that his living water is now being poured out upon this world as days like Noah's. Uh, And his adoration and his benevolence through his messenger is now coming forth. And uh, people can ignore it, and they can be as shallow as a glass of water, unable to to receive the great deluge that he is now sending forth in these latter days to remove all people's disgrace. But this is what is prophesied for the latter-day great mountain that arises in the latter days in Isaiah 25 and Micah 4.4. Jesus asked, would this world, would anyone have any faith? No, none. Not for prophecy. And that is the revelation of the Master's love, which people are just ignoring out there. And so shall it be. But no matter, I'm still going to do what I'm supposed to do. So, love from love. And know that these days of the the finished war in heaven. It's finished because God's word has been given. As soon as it was given on earth, it was it, six, seven months ago when I first gave the covenant to all mankind. It's been six months now. I've been pumping out gospel truth for six months and six months people just ignoring me for the most part. I got to... I got uh, 25,000 views. Not one person has left any likes at all at my channel. No like, no thumbs up for nothing. (laughs) No one has left comments. No one's talking about this on the internet. Everybody's just hoping I'll go away. But know that in the day that I gave the covenant, and as it was on earth, so was it in heaven, Because Satan could no longer be the accuser of the brethren, the war was emptied and uh, desolate and vanquished and over on that same day in the spirit realm. It was a day of tempers, a day of control, a day of day, a day of night, a day of up and a day of down. It was also a day of right and a day of wrong. But above all, it was additionally a day of division when the heavens could finally say goodbye to some pretty rank garbage stinky to its core, which was the Diablo Mephistopheles, who can never go before the Lord again as the accuser of their brethren. T'was therefore the very best day of some very good, good ones. One day it was the day of darkness of night would be forced into the shadows of our, our distant, ever helpless and hopeless world. And upon that day, Michael the Archangel, he led the first divisions of heaven's troopers, while Gabriel fronted the second. Even Raphael and Uriel hurled up the banners of faith for the fourth and fifth columns, while Sariel uh, established an ambush line on the left side of the holy sea of sapphire glass. Just like this video is showing, 
the living waters flowing again in the great sea of our Lord's crystal blue forgiveness for one and all. And they were all there to swiftly surround the evil sons of of God on three frontal sides. And as those, tr those tr heavenly troops of many flaming swords charged towards the army of evil, uh, the most magnificent strength of our Lord of Lords' valor went before them all. And as that great charge of the heavenly uh, light brigade raced forward, a great multitudes of flaming chariots did also with their riders dressed in the whitest robes of the brilliance of our Trinity's greatest honor, which was aflame and around them and burning within them. The majesty of majesties was standing tall. Our hero of heroes had blood in his eyes and flames of fire therein. And the darkness of evil was their, was to their right, and the blackness of wickedness was to their left. But as those torches of God's overflowing glory fanned their flames, the fallen ones of the polluted air all gathered upon the crystal clear shores of the sea of glass, which was aflame with many reflections of wondrous brightness from the presence of those holy warriors of many laurels and many accolades. And then all of a sudden, Michael the Archangel caused all of heaven's own to stop dead in their tracks, for he realized that the sons of Naughty already had their backs up against the, that sea of forgotten escapes. Twas a marvelous sight to behold, beloved, to behold the pure white equines, uh, stallions of love, of heaven's stables in the holy lands of the sanctified ones. Twas then a great time of many nays, to the foolish of that doomed son of many disappointments, as uh, countless regal stallions came to a real quick standstill, while time seemingly stood very still indeed. Nor were those hottest hosts surprised too much that Michael pushed the pause button, bringing their charge to a real grinding halt, for you, sh you should have seen his smile, beloved. And with the voice of many waters gushing over many falls, Michael uh, sounded like Christ. And suddenly uh, the master uh, addressed all of his shining troops as Michael bowed in love. And as he quickly raised his sweet flaming sword, he turned it and he beat it into the sickle of love. And uh, as he led the army, he said that was the kind of victory that would first put the word victor into victorious. And he said, this shall win the war on earth. And then he has sank it into the earth on his great white cloud of Revelation 14. And then our archangel of the archangels then said unto the rest of heaven's own, now, beloved, is the amazing time when the unfought battle is already ours. So now is the fantastic time for God's strength to shine like many fast flickering stars, even far more beautiful than his star of Bethlehem ever was. And now is also the most exciting moment for all of us to reflect upon the importance of this day of many evils being vanquished from the lingering, lingering stars below us. For this is the grandest season of all seasons when our star of stars who has come forth from Jacob has now sent his scepter from Judah into the hand of he who restores all things, saith the Lord God, my Shiloh of Genesis 49, mine alcoholic of verse 12, one whose eyes are dull and full and red of wine, the alcoholic of Habakkuk 2, King James, who has been transgressed by wine, but the just of love shall live by his kingdom age faith of unconditional love for one and all. For all that do not embrace him, I shall take the feasts of their banquet, saith the Lord, with his eyes full of fire of love. And he said, I shall take the dove uh, of love, and I shall bring forth 
their dung from their rotten feast, and I shall have it smushed into their face, exactly as it is foretold in the book of Malachi 2. For that was written for my messenger Daniel of Malachi 3, 1. And know that this is the greatest seasons of all. And uh, so the Lord can come and now he'll put, instead of the number 666, he'll erase that and put 777, the mark of the Lamb upon all who will bow down to the name of love. Every knee shall bow unto the name of love. Every tongue shall confess love. And we shall now, said the Lord, tear down all of the, the sons of darkness as we put out their lights for all to see and for all to appreciate and celebrate. For our threshold for dumb is very low on earth as people will someday hear the truth of these messages. And so these are the days when his nail-scarred hands uh, hoisted uh, the banner of love over all creation. Jehovah Nissi is that banner, beloved. And our Royal Highness, our Majesty of Majesties, then raised up his new standard of righteousness and unconditional love far above all of the hosts of heaven for the sons of the darkest darkness to easily see. And nor shall those vagabonds not feel their vile hearts melting as those doorways to hell are shut to heaven for at least a thousand years. And peace shall then flow as Daniel is no longer ignored in a day to come. Woe to those ignoring Daniel, for without my message through his mouth, this earth shall be destroyed. Exactly as it is written, no more shall enemies of our Godhead's authority be authorized to even speak to Elohim for the rest of that period of our greatest joy. For the voice of Satan has been quieted and removed, beloved. So the Lord says, let us all now swiftly descend upon those overgrown, spoiled bullies to finally shut up their most annoying noises once and for all, so heaven can now become silent and peaceful, and no more shall the accuser of the brethren ever darken heaven's door again and go forth to accuse the brethren anymore. And the Lord said, And as we go forth to banish those traitors to the grime of earth below, let us all remember that the tranquility of our home of many golden roads has been dis disturbed far too long by those foul masters of disaster, the fallen ones. And the Lord says, as we rush towards those bottom feeders of the sea of glass, let us also always remember how beloved all of the, uh, sen all of the sons of men were to those rebellious lovers of all things badly polluted or badly perverted by their true putrid tongues and minds set on doubt. Nor should we ever forget how those garbage pickers of the spiritual realm, the fallen ones, dove deep under that sea of glass. Murky was it to fish out reminders of debauchery that they placed there themselves as if they were pearl, their treasure in the deep. So let us now ignite our souls in love as we blaze away with no mercy upon all of our forlorn brother who has not repented because they love to burn brightly to consume all the weak-hearted of the earth who have the kind of sins that can't even be spoken or could, could not even be described by hand signals for a mute, detestable abominations, but yet... I shall forgive all of their iniquity and all of their wretchedness. Though they be as scarlet, I shall see them only as they shall be. The second they enter glory, they are totally sinless before me. And the Lord said, And I will also give forth a word of caution. For it goes without saying that when all of heaven's holy ones with me are soon brought upon the unholy like fireflies upon dung. Never dare to turn your backs on any 
of those backstabbers that once called you brother. After all, those lovers of some very raunchy things would love to see any of you become oppressed with their foul breasts upon your shoulders. So let, for, let, let therefore the wise now pronounce judgment of truth over all those lying spirits as they go go forth now in love and pull some pin feathers right out of their butts, said the voice of Michael the archangel as he led the command. And people know that the mere act of prayer is abhorrent to the forces of evil. And you shall find out that there will be all kinds of hindrances, depression, doubt, frustrations. And many of those hindrances will have the foul smell of sulfur smoke about them, even though Satan has been removed. For the gross darkness of Isaiah 60 is the satanic residual that he has now left behind, even after he's been hogtied. And in the vision, unexpected peals came forth. And then without any warning, flashes of lightning gloriously came forth from Michael's eyes as he gazed into the distance towards those who always enjoyed being like vampire bats to every follower of light to drink the life and love right out of them so they would commit blaspheming of the Holy Spirit, the unforgivable sin, so they would perish and let their love die. Cold hearts, un no passionate, no uh, the walking dead. And it came to pass that Michael then lowered his flaming sickle in front of millions times millions of his beloved brethren of splendid lights that were shining as one. And then the, came the greatest charge of all charges, was abruptly back in full swing as countless seraphim and cherubim fluttered their wings in a real strong devastating winds of some fast coming annihilation of the spiritual kind. For the sad days of strife were then about to be destroyed from on high by the word of the word of God. And even before any of the little Ophanan angels could fly like the eagles that they were, uh, uh, they were about to catch their own prey, nor would the disorderly shadows of any discord ever even remain. Even the messenger angels, who were also in the midst of the hosts with shields ablaze of fire, they were also all pumped up with the finalized dreams of some real fantastic retribution based from love for heaven's outcast. For the heavens above heavens were then suddenly alive with the squawks of countless eagles as the faces of those birds of prey screamed within the profiles of those high flyers who had happy faces of men beaming like many moons. And as the heavens roared, with the cries of many righteous lions, those feline facets of the cherubim couldn't even wait to kick tail of some of those opposing, opposing black-winged lions that were always roaming the earth to see who they could devour. And uh, he knew that, uh, that uh, even the sound of many grunts then unexpectedly came forth from the ox-faced profiles of of those advancing holy cherubim who couldn't wait to victoriously trample over hell's very own devilish angels like a speeding stampede at roundup time. And as talons, claws, and hoofs raced towards the dismal army of those already long ago defeated, great was their confidence, magnificent was their authority, and ever so mighty were the many roaring cries of victory before it even came forth for it was assured by the word of God. For so it was that there was no confusion ahead of them. The veil was ripped, and after all, the only regret which laid behind them was the fact that our Trinity never allowed the host to kick some angel dust long ago to rid heaven of its dimmest lights. This is how it is now and the angels have come and they are separating the tares now from uh, the beloved the spiritual from the religious the religious will be left behind and they'll be thrown in the fiery furnace if they walk the, the road of perishing of the f unforgivable sin of letting their love light go out that would curse this channel of love 
So it was a time of sweet and bitter. It was the unbelievable time when the clash of clashes was bringing forth some real giants of goodness against some extraordinarily tall titans of badness. Nor were there any forthcoming battle battle uh, battalions about to charge the trajectory of their head-on, head-to-head collision course. Uh, Beak would soon be brushing against beaks. Snouts would soon be pressed up against others. And those beings of right and wrong ignored their whiskers all getting tangled up as many ugly snarls with yellow canines dared to come up against other snarly foes who wanted to be king of the jungle. And by the time that uh, the most memorable moments of those demons' plight Uh, it became obvious. It was ever so clear to all of heaven's troopers that all of those spawn of the most treasonous treachery had turned into ordinary dirty rams long ago, for they chose not to be as lambs, and they chose to cross over physically and spiritually so they could provoke some conflict between them and the orderly sheep of God's many folds who were always silently uh, going ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling. Wherever they went, they were the obedient lambs of love. And those servants of God's fields always made it very easy for our Lord to know where they were during any moment of time since their prayers were ringing out like the bells that were ringing. It was as if those sons of obedience allowed the unending chimes of their many highest praises to constantly resound away to glorify Elohim, Adonai, Allah, every night, every day. But one thing, but one thing, one thing was then a done deal, beloved. Way, way before God politely ever shook hands with the devil on anything. God's armies were more than mighty. The devil's own were pretty wimpy. The Lord's troops were very good at ambush, while Satan's own bearers of his unspeakable burdens were very good at being ambushed. Nor was it hard to see that our Trinity's hosts were no suckers for punishment, while Beelzebub's losers were just plain all-day suckers every day. Then, as those two opposing sides were just about to crash into a deathly fate for all lovers of death, the lovers of life shined away like many marvelous meltdowns set on self-destruct. But the sons of darkness had no choice except to allow the glory of those holy rollers to overtake them like many streams of lava, always covering up everything as dumb as rocks, like all those ignoring my word. Do not ignore this channel, beloved. Know that anything as stupid as some sin-loving numbskulls who long ago lost their brains when God first said no to uh, when they first said no to God's commands are those who will not support this ministry. For if you do not support this ministry, you are standing in line with the revealed lawless one. Then those heavens volleyed and thundered away as the sea of glass beneath Satan's own suddenly became slippery to them as huge puddles of grease. But the cavalry of heaven's light brigade had the sure-footedness of many mountain goats. And even before that advancing force of goodness could even say the name of Jesus Christ Almighty, they were soon all over the darkness of the devil's rejects. Nor was it hard for those agents of our Lord's brightest lights to make the hordes of hell to seemingly vanish as their darkest darkness was then forced to bow down before God's light. And the countless light bearers of God's lightest light of love then covered up Lucifer's own like a microwave oven that was sending out rays of the hottest inward heat. And if this war of many flaming swords were to have been a fight to the finish, there is no doubt at all that the incinerating kind of heat from those hosts ablaze with righteous indignation could have caused some demons' heads to have popped like popcorn. But as it was, it was a fight to end all other fights. Nor would the hosts ever really have to fight anymore forever and ever. They shall fight no more forever. 
For so it was that our God, the Son, was the warrior spirit of spirits who was co who was their covering from the very first day he first brought them forth we're fearfully and wonderfully made and neither could our winner of winners ever lose for winners always take all and within the heat of that fiery engagement of sheer futility all of the devil's own writhed and squirmed about like they were also some slimy snakes as Satan was. Twas a day of rage, a day of submission, a day of rebellion, and a day to be bound. And as he was, Beelzebub Mephistopheles is no more beloved. Twas also a day when those foes would be toast and became burnt pretty darn black and nor could their black edges ever be scraped off. Twas therefore to become a day, uh, a dilly of a day, when hogtide would quickly take on some brand new meaning. For so it was that from the very last grains of sand within the great hourglass of heaven were coming on down extremely fast, and when they were finally all gathered on its bottom, it would then become the time when some unbreakable chains would shackle those sons of stink to the future that they could never even have, much less enjoy, beloved. But no, this was the time, uh, the additionally days of dark darkness that would be lit up pretty uh, like a pretty shaken and confused boxer who was seeing a lot of stars. It was also a day when everyone involved in that ordeal of Earth's kingdom age beginning knew that God alone was in charge of everything and it was only given to all of them that they would eventually be the ones that would have to do all the paperwork. <laughs> love from love, beloved. Come on back now. You